Lily Tube at my PC, and today I'm making another tutorial for you guys. So, in today's tutorial, we're going to talk about some basic variables. If you don't know what a variable is, variables are things that will store data for you. So, a very basic variable that's used in a lot of different games are, would be score. So, if you have a score variable, the advantage of having it in a variable is that you can use it in different places and add to it, take away from it, and it just, the value for score is just scored in one place. So, today we're going to talk about the eight most basic variables called in Java, or types of variables though, I should say, in Java and they're called primitive data types. So there's 8, byte, short, integer, long, float, double, boolean, and char. So that's 8. Now the first one I'm talking about are the ones that can only store whole numbers. So there, there are four of them and the difference between the four are how much data they can store. So the one that can store the least data is byte. Um, these are all stored in binary code, so they're in a series of zeros and ones, and byte can be stored in 8 digits of binary code. So that is 2 to the 8th power amount of values, so 256. So for that reason, you can go from negative 128 to 127. So 120 below 0, 127 above 0, and 0 to 256. That's why, that's how um, the coding works. And so whenever you have a value between negative 128 and 127, and you use byte, you save a lot of space as compared to using a little bit larger ones. So, that same concept works for the larger ones as well. So short can store a range of 2 to the 16th different values. Integer is 2 to the 32nd different values. And then long, the largest one, can store 2 to the 64th different values. That's, that's a lot of values. That's a range of 18 quintillion different values. That's 18 zeros. So that, that's pretty major. So those are the first four different data types. And the next two are, go are float and double. Float and double also store numbers. Only with float and double they can store decimals. We'll start with float because it can store less decimals. Now it's, it's hard to say how many decimals it can st store because it depends on how many significant figures the number is. But um, from what I understand, float ranges from 30 to 40 decimals. And the double, the next largest one, can store uh, over 300 decimals. And for as far as storage goes, a float takes up the same amount of space as an integer, so 32 different different digits in binary code, and double stores the same amount as long, so 64 digits. So that's six of them out of the way right there. And so now the next one we're going to talk about is char. Char stores characters. It stores, it takes up the same amount of space as, as a short, so that's 16 different digits. Now char, you can just simply set it equal to one and only one character. So that could be A, B, C, a, any one of those, or space, or a slash, or any character that you can put that on a keyboard can be stored in a char. Next one is Boolean. Boolean is extremely efficient for as far as data storage goes because it only takes up one digit in binary code because it can be true or false. That's all. Now this sounds pretty useless at first, but in games or anything really, you'll see that you'll be using Boolean over and over again for things that don't really matter, just true or false. For instance, if in some games, they might have some of those being daytime and some of those being nighttime. The computer will ask, okay, is day or night? That, that's just true or false, day or night. That, that's, um, those are situations where you use Boolean variables. So those eight different, different primitive data types. Stick around for tutorial and we'll learn how to use them. So to start off, let's, let's save it. I'm going to save it as primitive data types.java. You can either put .java here or select it in the drop down menu. But I'm going to put down all files. So now type down public class primitive data. All the code goes in these brackets. And make sure that this name right up here matches. Now we're going to start our main method. So You're still not at the point where you have to know what this, this part means. But just memorize it and know that's the main method. And you need the main method to start the program. Okay, so now we're going to make a series of variables. The first variable I'm going to make is byte b equals 5. Alright, so semicolon is necessary after every statement we have to do, we have to do it in the hell um after the print ln method like we did the hell world program when you're making variables it's the same content first start with the type of variable what you want to name the variable and the value you're going to assign to the variable so we're saying the, the type of variable is a byte the name of the variable is going to be b and it's going to equal 5 so we're going to reference it from now on as b and whenever we say b we're going it's the, com the computer's going to know that b is a byte so it needs to store it eight digits of, of a binary code and it needs to be set equal to 5. Okay? And we're going to set a little comment after this. Remember, comments do not affect the code at all. I'm going to put down the range of a byte. Byte can range between negative 128 and 127. Now we're going to go on to make our next one and call it short s. We set it equal to 
3000. Notice that if we try to set bite to 3000, we would get an error because it's not within this range, but the range of short is higher. So again, type name the value we're going to assign to that. Put down the comment here, give you the range of short. Next is int, int which is the type i which we're going to name it, and set it equal to 2 billion, because as a pretty long range. If we try to set short equal to 2 billion, it wouldn't work, because 2 billion is not within short's range. Okay. And another thing I want you to notice is that I put an int here, but here I put an integer. When I say int integer, it means the same thing. The only reason I had to put int here is because they figured integer would take too long to write, so they just have you put down int when you're coding. Because you're going to be using it a lot, and those extra L four letters will save you time. Alright, now next one above, integer is long, long L, and you can make it pretty long. There we go, that's long. So that is really big. You can make an long, very long. All right. So those are the first four mm -hmm. types I talked about in the abstract. Those could all deal with only whole numbers. And now we're going to move on to the ones that can deal with decimals. First of which is float. Call float f. It's equal to three point one four. And this isn't. Um, we wouldn't be able to set. I or L or any of these equal to 3.14 because it's a decimal point. Because only float and double can be decimal. For the description, numbers can be decimals. Decimals. And go up to 30 or 40 decimal points. And same of that as, as a. Alright. Now double. Double D equals. I'm not exactly sure how many. That's the point you can have, but you can have a lot, so I'm just gonna. There we go. There you go. Those are our two decimal ones that contain decimals. And the last two are kind of unique. We're gonna start with char. Char can be set equal to any one character. So make sure, if we're only putting one character, make sure you put the instead of apostrophe, it's only with a single apostrophe rather than double. So this one not that one. That's what you use when you're only using one character. Last one, this is our most space efficient one. It's called Boolean. Why they decided to not shorten this one, I don't know. Char is actually called character, I forgot to mention. So the ones that have, whose true names are longer than their the names in the um, programming is char and int. And Boolean they decided to shorten, I don't know why. Let's call it bow. The reason I call it bow rather than b is because we already called byte b and I don't want to confuse anything. Equal Okay, so now our eight variables. Now let's print them all out. So I'm going to say system dot out dot print. So I'll say byte. So this is print out byte with the semicolon and put space there. This will print out byte with the semicolon, and then I put down b. So it'll print out byte, and it'll just print it out because that's in in parentheses or abbreviation, sorry. And then when you put down b without abbreviations, it'll look what what equal to five, and it'll just print out five. And the same will happen. Let's we'll put it down like that. Plus S. One thing I want to do here is that if we just print out like this, it'll show up one line one, one after another. We don't want to do that. I want this to show up on the next. So there's a symbol you can type down um, when you want to skip a line. That's, that's um, backward slash. Whenever you type this down and it's in abbreviations, it'll skip a line. Next one's integer. So we want this one to skip a line as well. Slash n long. That's the last of them. Now, say we're running out of space here, we want. You can just go, click enter and go on the next line, and it won't affect it. The only thing that end statements is a semicolon. And so if you skip lines, it doesn't matter. So we're going to skip line for next one is float. And we want to skip another line in order to organize it. So we're just going to put two slash n. Another slash n because we want to skip another line. Char. And last but not least, boolean slash n slash n. Boolean plus B. Okay, so I put the semicolon there, so the end of the statement. Now it should print that out. Make sure to save. 
Now I switch over to command prompt. Make sure it's in the correct folder. Now we're going to type down, now we're going to compile it. So Java C, primitive data types dot Java. All right, if we get an error. Now don't panic because I predicted this. So what it's saying is, it says, this, this number is too large. And we say, well, it's, it's long, and that's the bounds of long, so why doesn't it work? When, whenever you're writing down code, it'll store, it'll store uh, the num numbers in memory before it's actually set equal to a variable. And by default, it sets it in memory equal to an integer. So 5 is actually set to an integer before it's set to b, or byte. And 3000 is, at, is at, it's set an integer before it's set to a short. And this one's an integer, but that doesn't matter it stays an integer. But this one is set to an integer by default, and then it exceeds the amount, and then it doesn't know what to do. So we want to tell the compiler that it's a long, and we want it to be stored as a long. So the way you do that is type, put an L down. The same works for the decimal ones. So in order to state that this is a float, we want, we want it to be stored in memory as a float, type an F. And this one, put down D, so it's because it's being stored as double. All right. I'll save it, and now when we compile it again, you can press the arrows in order to do the previous one, by the way, it's a nice little trick. Compile it again, it should compile it with no error. Perfect. So primitive Java primitive. Fingers crossed. This is exactly what we want to happen. So we got, it says byte is 5, which it is. Byte is 5. And it says short is 3000, which it is. Short is 3000. The jury is, was that 2 billion? Yes, it is. And right here it says long, it says without a semicolon, it means I probably made a typo, which I did. Gotta put that. All of these match. Then, now you know how to work with primitive data, data types. You, whenever you're working with numbers, you should know which primitive data type you want to set equal to. Now we're going to move on to the challenge and see if you really understand this. So for today's challenge, download this file right here. It's called primtest.jar, and I have a download link in the description. And then run it. This is a program that I made with Java. By the end of the series, we'll make them too. But the point of this one is to help you understand the difference between these different primitive types. So I'll give you a number here. This is negative 93, and you got to put down what's the, which one fits best. So I'm gonna put down byte because that's in the range of the byte, and correct. And that one's also a byte, but if I put short, it'll, it'll tell you to put it wrong, and it'll keep track a track record of how, how well you're doing. So if you manage to um, get these right pretty easily, then you've got a good understanding of what, then you've got a good understanding of these prim, prim data types, and it'll help you in the future. So pra just practice with this, that's the challenge. So that's the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching. If you if you found this helpful, please rate, comment, subscribe to support my, my videos. If you did this challenge and you, you feel like more would be helpful, I've got a list of challenges on my website, sinforge.co. You can find my tutorials, my challenges, and my games on that website. It's also a work in progress, so any critique would be um, very much appreciated. So without any further ado, I'll end the end of this, and we'll see you guys later.